Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. On tonight's episode of The Breakout Barn, we go into detail on how I killed my husband. Welcome back to The Breakout Barn. As you can see, I have A, charged my GoPro, and B, have an external microphone again, so hopefully you can hear me and it doesn't sound like I'm talking through two tuna cans at the bottom of the Long Island Sound. Ah, uh, tonight, we have fully cured Bondo and sandpaper. Specifically, 80, 120, 200 grit. Uh, we are going to be knocking this bad boy down, making it nice and smooth. Uh, how smooth we get it, we'll see. How long my fingers hold up, we'll also see. Um, pretty much it. Just kidding. Got some more news. So aside from that, we're going to hopefully end up having some flocking fun. Made the executive decision about, uh, I don't know, three days after I made the last video that... Uh, this thing is pretty well, this, this is cooked. Um, this goose has, uh, has had its day. Tried to do a little bit of restorative work on it, um, and it's just not happening. There's no way that I'm getting it close without skimming the whole thing, putting the, putting the, the uh, texture back into it. And then even then, I don't trust myself enough to uh, apply the, the texture evenly throughout the, uh, the new material to get it to look like an OEM dash. Um, that, combined with the fact that I love a good flock, uh, I decided to just pull the trigger. Um, so, we got a pound of black flock material from Swaytex. We have a nice jerky jerky flocky guy, uh, a mini flocker, uh, which is basically two cardboard tubes with, uh, with some holes in the end of it. You put material in, you go, and then it goes. Lots of, lots of innuendos here tonight. And in this box, it says, do not open the adhesive. So we're going to get this going on a time lapse. Uh, might be taking a brief break to weld a bung on an oil pan for a citizen in need. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to remain at least six feet away, wear appropriate PPE, because I have that here in the breakout barn. And um, then get to flocking. I know I did it again. So, welcome back. Pre-time lapse, a couple days later. Uh, ran into a couple of hiccups while I was uh, doing the last one. Sanding it down and everything. Um, uh, the fear that I talked about last video where when you start sanding into things and kind of chunks remove of material started to happen. So, uh, I had to add another layer on top of it, which I was kind of expecting to do a skim coat anyways, but um, wasn't expecting it quite to this extent. Uh, not quite sure if the bondo just wasn't mixed fully or if it was a, a temperature cure thing. It's been dropping down into the 40s here at night, which is not ideal cure temperatures for, uh, for bondo and bondo-like products. Um, but uh, success. And um, I'm going to walk you through where I am right now. We've got some dry time before we can actually flock this thing, so um, bear with me for a little bit. Uh, as you saw in the time lapse, maybe, uh, after I had all the Bondo down, sanded, uh, to a point, I went 80 down to 200 grit, and, uh, after the 200 grit, everything felt super smooth, it looked really smooth, of course, the second you put primer on something, everything starts to pop. So here's what we have now. A few steps ahead of where I needed to be, but we have a primed, ready to be touched up, sanded again. Uh, a little bit dash prior to flocking. So, <clears throat> step one, 
high fill, light colored, sandable primer. Uh, the reason for doing that is that even when you go from an 80 grit down to a, uh, to a 120, to a 180, to a 200, uh, I think I finished with a 220 actually, you're still gonna leave imperfections in there hand sanding and it's gonna feel super smooth. There's gonna be a bunch of Bondo dust and crap. Even when you, even when you blow it off, the, the var variations and gradations in color between the materials, between the, the black into the gray, into the you know, reddish, grayish color that Bondo ends up drying as, uh, it's gonna hide a lot of those. And it's definitely gonna hide some of the, the actual sanding marks um, if you don't go much behind 200. Uh, because we're not trying to turn this thing into a piece of glass because we're flocking it, it's not super critical. The critical part is you know, it, it maybe takes your, uh, your margin of error from a few thou to, uh, you know, maybe 10 thou, 20 thou, uh, maybe more than that. I'm just using numbers, but uh, it drastically reduces your, or drastically increases your, uh, the liability amounts for margin of error. So, first step, high fill primer, light color, shows imperfections. Sand it again, down to 220 in this instance. Try to get it as smooth as possible. Spray it a little bit more of the, the high fill primer on it and, um, and, and let it set up. I was happy with the results. Again, you know, not trying to go nuts on this thing. This is not a million dollar replace every nut and bolt with factory stamped hardware. I'm not the type of person. I, congratulations if you are, but uh, you people are a little bit too anal for me. Uh, second step. Again, sandable primer, this time black. So the reason that we're going to a black after the gray is that in, in certain areas, I'll walk you through them, you know, the, the inside of the, of the gauge hoods, um, around the cigarette lighter, the hazard switch, the exterior trim pocket for the, uh, for the glove compartment release, uh, areas like that, you know, around the, uh, the, the HVAC vents. When you put down the glue for the flocking, it's black. Right, so you, you color match it to whatever color you're flocking. So it's black. So it's it serves as a bit of paint, but that glue doesn't cover 100%. Uh, and colors like gray, white, uh, very high contrast to a black are going to show very visibly. So it's not going to look uniform. So by putting a by putting a, a black layer of primer down underneath, you just um, you you help eliminate any margin of error that you've induced by going gray or any sort of uh, of color imperfections. Um, as you can see, we've got a couple of wet spots. I, I had to throw a little bit more there because there is a slight divot. Wasn't enough to require Bondo, but, um, it, it was enough to be addressed. You can kind of see the outline in the, in the right light. I don't know if it's catching it there, uh, of, of a perforation. Um, that, that perforation itself, again, I didn't scallop out. What I did is I actually lifted up the little flaps in there, threw some super glue on it. Uh, laid it flat with, uh, with a book across it, actually a block of wood, uh, not a book, but uh, to keep it flat, so it's glued in place. Again, visual imperfection is gonna be covered by the flock. So not terribly, not terribly concerned with it. I don't know, flat black is great at hiding imperfections. And I don't know if you can really see any. Uh, you might be able to see the very edges of where the bono is joined in certain areas, but to the visible eye, I'm, you know, I am two feet away. You were seeing this in 1080p. Um, I, I'm very happy with, uh, with the results here. Again, our concerns are it's structurally sound and it's ready to be flocked. So i uh, got a few more hours before I can throw some glue on this thing. i got to wait for some certain wetter areas or areas that I needed more primer to, to get a full coverage to set up. Um, typically, two to four hours. It's actually fairly warm in here tonight. It's 62, so uh, we should be right on schedule. And I will catch you guys when it is time to drop some glue and spray some little silky strands. Welcome back, all you cool cats and kittens. Uh, while this was curing up, I was, uh, raging and, uh, probably sniffing a little too many paint fumes. So, um, sorry to everyone on Snapchat, I guess we'll, uh, we'll throw that out there. There's definitely me yelling some high school memories, uh, on my story. Uh, for the rest of you, we're ready to flock. And I believe it was Life Ruin that said, what the fuck is up? Do 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 do. Go. 
or something like that, but... What the fuck is up? Uh, it's time to do that here, and I'm going to run through the process. Uh, I'm not going to do it live because, well, yeah, fuck it. We'll do it live. Who's that news anchor that said that thing with the, ah, fuck it. We'll do it live. Nope. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to do it on a time lapse. Uh, change my mind again. Basically, Brett Favre retirement jokes because... Uh, in order for this to work, so, uh, so let me run through the components. I know that I, I graze over them in the beginning. We have one giant bag of flocking material. We have a drop cloth because this shit goes everywhere. I don't know if you can see how fine it is, but it is, it is fine. <clears throat> we have suede decks. Just flock it. It's like, it's like the Kenny Powers K-Swiss of glues, apparently. Uh, this is a black undercoat adhesive. Um, ordered 16 ounces. They sent me eight. I thought that there was two in the box. So we're going to see how far we can get with eight tonight. Cool news about flocking is that you can literally just throw on some more glue and throw on some more flock. Uh, so if I get half of this done and I have to order more glue, great. Um, I think that I've been uh, pretty liberal with glue application in the past, which you definitely need to be. So um, ideal way for most people is going to be a, f a foam roller. I uh, suck with foam rollers. I don't know why. I just, I can't evenly apply things with them. So I have a chip brush. Um, the secret is to do section at a time. Flock it. <laughs> with your mini flocker, which hopefully you're good at pumping. And uh, this is the mini flocker. Like I was saying uh, a little bit earlier, those are your holes. Oh, wait, let's, where are we? Are we? Those are your holes. Uh, that is where the flocking material comes out. This guy, two pieces. You know, I have a tripod. I don't know why I'm trying to do this. Two pieces. Flocking material goes in, top goes on. Little. A little, uh, little bit of a pumping action here. Flocking sprays out, sticks to the glue. You look like a race car driver. So, that being said, uh, we're going to get underway. I'm going to put my respirator back on because it is definitely fumy in here. And um, I'm straight edge. You can't break it. So, uh, thanks, Life Runner. And uh, I will catch all you cool cats and kittens on the, uh, on the flip side of this one. So, situation report. GoPro battery, there, where is it? GoPro died again. Right at the end of me pumping that sweet flocking tube. So, back to phone. Surprise, surprise. I know, I can't believe it. Really need to just pop on Amazon and order another battery. Um, overall, pretty decent results. Oh, also, uh, two of my lights just went out again. Um, Starting to think that uh, the LED fixtures might have not the correct ballast in them. More shit to handle on another day. Uh, that being said, I am pretty thrilled with the results so far. So I ended up using about, uh, probably about three quarters of that eight ounces. Uh, surprisingly enough to cover the dash. One thing I failed to mention earlier, cool. One thing I failed to mention earlier is that you have like eight to 10 minutes from the time that you lay the adhesive down till it starts to tack up and the flocking material won't stick to it. So uh, you don't have to rush, but you definitely have to move with purpose. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera around now and walk you through what we've got right now from an initial result. Okay, so side note, not a professional. All right, I was expecting to have to do two coats. And the cool thing that I mentioned before is that 
if you screw this up, you just kind of throw a little bit of glue in the spots that are light or, or spots that you might have missed and uh, throw a little bit more flocking material on it. So I mentioned it makes a giant mess. Uh, this stuff is everywhere. So both lights are back. So it turns out if you talk shit about them, I guess uh, communists turn them back on for you. Um, that being said, if you're not familiar with flocking, it is a material that's primarily used in uh, small ornate furniture making, uh, specifically jewelry boxes, um, desks, dressers, and what it is is a is it's it's a felt suede material essentially that uh, is glued together into one homogeneous rug, all right, for for lack of a better term. What it leaves you with is a pretty decently matte finish uh, that's pretty wear resistant and um, it is fairly uniform, right? So there's a lot of wraps that you can do. There's a lot, there's a lot of other things. And, and by doing this, you eliminate the possibility of, of air bubbles. Um, again, the surface underlayment has to be in pretty good condition. I definitely have some areas where I went a little thick with the glue. I mentioned that uh, I was going to be liberal with it, and I was. And it's yet to be seen if you're going to be able to see them. I saw them when I was, uh, let's see. Yeah, like there's one that's sticking through right in here. You can kind of see. Um, we'll see what happens. So, so, so the, the next steps on this are put all the flocking material on, wait. Uh, I think the cure time on this stuff is 24 hours in the temperature range that we're in right now. So wait 24 hours, come out, um, air dust it off, blow it off with an air hose, uh, see what your imperfections are. So I did this on a drop cloth specifically so that um, I could lift this drop cloth up and, and refunnel all the material that didn't make it into the tube and, and reuse it, right? So um, I, I mentioned before that I, I bought a one pound bag and of that one pound bag, I used, I don't know, 30% of it. Uh, Lord knows what that is in ounces, but a uh, one pound bag was like 18 bucks. So uh, anyways, back to what we're getting at. So wait 24 hours, tip it over, dust it off with some, uh, with some compressed air, um, see what it ends up looking like. My guess is pretty decent. My guess is there's definitely gonna be some spots that I'm gonna have to throw a little bit more glue on and, uh, and, um, and, and add some more material back in. Uh, my concern, obviously, is the gauges around the gauges. Uh, I tried to do a pretty good job of coverage, but um, I, I'm just thinking that, you know, when I get this thing in the sunlight, I'm going to see some spots that are that are definitely softer than others. Um, anything else we can talk about while we're here? Probably going to wrap this video here, and we'll, uh, we'll start off the next one by talking about the results that we've got here. Uh, oh, perfect. You can see it right there. So this is the glue line that I'm talking about through, right? So I, I, at this point, I don't know until I blow off the excess material, because there's definitely excess material on there. It, it, it's one of those things where most of the time more isn't better, but more is definitely better. So there's, there's actually piles of this stuff clumped. You can see a couple of them in here where it kind of looks a little bumpy. Um, so there's definitely piles of this stuff that's clumped because uh, you'd rather have more and, and have it blow off than have an area where it's not and the glue dries and then you see shiny glue through it. So we'll see, you know, worst case scenario, I, I throw a little bit more glue on it, throw a little bit more flock on it, do it till it's even, we're good to go. I am not going to do any more communist jokes, uh, at least not in this episode, primarily because I opened it with a Carol Baskins reference and I mentioned hardcore throughout. So it only makes sense that I end with the Steel Panther quote. Uh, I believe it is two in the pink, one in the stink. That's called the shocker. And until next time. Bounce.